This is not a test. This channel has interrupted its regular programming to provide disaster information not being readily reported. Important details will follow this tone. Hey folks! Ira here. I hope you have had a great Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in for our report of odd events taking place around the world. For the record, today is March the 22nd, 2017. We turn our attention first to our Canadian friends in the region of Halton, who's calling for residents to use care and caution to help protect themselves and pets from rabies. In a report to the region's Health and Social Services Committee on Tuesday, March 21, the Halton Region Health Department says there have been 10 cases, 7 raccoons and 3 skunks, of raccoon strain rabies over the past 6 months. Over the last 20 years, the incidence of rabies in wild and domestic animal populations has decreased significantly in Halton Region. In 2016, Halton Health says there were 10 rabies cases a number that hasn't been observed since the early 1990s. Raccoon strain rabies had not been seen in Ontario since 2005. It is believed that the strain was reintroduced to Ontario by an infected raccoon that was inadvertently transported, possibly on a transport truck, from New York State. Rabies is a viral disease that can be transmitted to humans through a bite or a scratch or when the rabies virus comes in contact with mucous membranes like the tissues of the mouth, nose or eyes. Rabies is virtually 100% fatal once the disease produces symptoms in humans. Public health inspectors respond to all reported incidents, in which humans were bitten or scratched by an animal. In 2016, there were 1,013 reported incidents of human-to-animal exposures investigated in Halton, which is a 14% increase over the average number of reported incidents each year between 2011 and 2015. The response can include confining animals involved in the incident, sending specimens for testing, delivering vaccine to physicians and ensuring rabies vaccination for cats and dogs involved in the investigations are current. Here's a heads up if you have plans to visit the beach this week, red tide has returned to parts of southwest Florida's coast. New tests by Florida Fish and Wildlife have detected low to medium levels of red tide along the Charlotte County coastline. Red algae has plagued southwest Florida off and on for years. It's known to cause fish gills and breathing problems for people who are at the beach when red tide is present. Scientists have made a direct connection between an algae bloom and the Arabian Sea, which has blown up to the size of Mexico, and climate change. The massive bloom has been captured from satellites. 30 years ago, algae in the Gulf of Oman could barely be seen. Now, twice a year, microscopic organisms turns the Gulf green as it sprawls throughout the Arabian Sea towards India. So-called scientists saw conditions produced by climate change or allowing the algae to thrive. Columbia University researchers have even traced the algae blooms to ice melting in the Himalayas. Satellite technology has also allowed researchers to connect algae with greater levels of water and air pollution. The phenomenon threatens local ecosystems, algae has been known to paralyze fish. The United Nations Science Agency says in rare cases algal toxins have killed humans. Algae can clog pipes at desalination plants providing as much as 90% of fresh water for the country. Fisheries in the country could also be harmed by the algae bloom. In 2008 an eruption of a different type of algae beached 50 tons of fish, which were starving for oxygen and rotted along the coast of Oman. A fire burning in the mountains of North Carolina, near my home actually, grew by hundreds more acres on Tuesday, reaching 1,750 acres by the end of the day, 
according to federal forestry officials. The fire, called the White Creek Fire, is now about 30% contained. It's burning near Shortoff Mountain at the south end of Leanville Gorge. The gorge is a federally designated wilderness inside of Pisca National Forest. Also on Tuesday, investigators announced that they believe the fire was sparked by a lightning strike on March the 6th. The lightning strike likely smoldered until fuels dried enough for the fire to spread, officials said. The fire wasn't reported to officials until 10 days later. Firefighters at first tried to knock the fire down while it was small, said Operations Section Chief Greg Phillip with the United States Forest Service. But weather and fuel conditions were against firefighters, so the decision was made to pull back to a safer position. Instead, firefighters are creating a big box around the fire due to the rugged terrain in Leanville Gorge. Defensible fire lines fall back to natural features and previously existing control lines. This indirect approach follows incident objectives of protecting public and firefighter safety and minimizing impacts in the wilderness. Firefighters are planning to monitor the fire Wednesday, targeting any hot spots that appear near the fire lines. As of Tuesday, 169 firefighters were fighting the fire. A large area at the southern end of Gorge and nearby lands remains closed to the public, we've got several days of precipitation coming up. If we get that across the entire fire area, we should be in good shape. Smoke is currently affecting nearby communities, including Lake James and Hickory. Federal and state authorities say a case of low pathogenic avian influenza has been detected in a commercial poultry flock in western Kentucky. The National Veterinary Services Laboratory in Ames, Iowa, confirmed the presence of H7 and 9 low pathogenic avian influenza in samples taken from the Christian County premises. The virus exposure at the premises was initially detected by the Murray State University Breathitt Veterinary Center in Hopkinsville while conducting a routine pre-slaughter test last week. The affected premises are under quarantine, and the flock of approximately 20 to 1,000 hens was depopulated as a precautionary measure. Surveillance on flocks within a six-mile radius of the Index Farm is underway. The company that operates the farm is conducting additional surveillance testing on other commercial facilities it operates within that area. A wildfire has destroyed at least eight homes and several other buildings near Lake McConaughey, Nebraska. The blaze had been contained, but fire crews are still watching hot spots. Residents had evacuated as flames raced their way, several firefighters were treated for minor injuries, and more than 100 firefighters from a couple dozen departments responded to calls late Sunday morning. An overnight fire had rekindled a stiff wind swept up embers near the northeast corner of the lake. He estimated that Sunday's blaze blackened at least 500 acres. The chief investigators suspect the original fire Saturday was caused by overheated wheel bearings on a vehicle. Last year, researchers in Siberia's remote Belly Island made the bizarre discovery that the ground had started bubbling in certain places, and was squishy like jelly. At the time, just 15 of these swollen bubbles had been identified, but an investigation has revealed that 7,000 or so of them have cropped up and the concern now is that they could explode at any moment. You see, with time, the bubble expands and eventually explodes, releasing gas. This is how gigantic funnels form. Now, each of the 7,000 newly identified bubbles are poised to explode without warning. Back in 2016, local environmental researchers decided to pull back the dirt and grass that had been blanketing these bulging bumps of earth and found that the air escaping from them contained up to 1,000 times more methane than the surrounding air, and 25 times more carbon dioxide. And things can get even weirder at the bottom of the biggest sinkholes. A 2014 investigation into an 98-foot crater on the Yamal Peninsula found that air near the bottom of the crater contained unusually high concentrations of methane. Researchers have hypothesized that these methane bubbles are linked to a recent heat wave that had prompted the Siberian tundra's permafrost to thaw. Siberia's permafrost has become famous for its ability to keep things perfectly preserved for thousands of years, 
such as this amazing 12,400-year-old puppy, or lion cubs, which still had their tawny fur coats on after 30,000 years. A 2013 study found that a global temperature rise would be enough to kickstart an unprecedented period of melting, but thanks to abnormally hot summers linked to climate change, local researchers suspect that this is already starting to occur, with daily temperatures in July 2016 hitting a worrying 95 degrees. Finally, it is with a heavy heart to report that at least four people, including a London police officer who was stabbed and the alleged assailant, were killed after a terror attack that saw more than 20 people injured outside the Parliament building on Wednesday. It is believed there was only one attacker. Among the injured were three police officers, sadly, we can confirm that new four people have died. That includes the police officer who was protecting Parliament and one man that we believe to be the attacker who was shot by police fire at the scene. A full counter-terrorism investigation is underway. Police said a vehicle mowed down pedestrians on London's Westminster Bridge, leaving more than a dozen with injuries described as catastrophic. Rowley said the car then crashed near to Parliament, and at least one man, armed with a knife, continued the attack and tried to enter the Parliament. The knife-wielding attacker stabbed a police officer and was shot on the grounds outside Britain's parliament, sending the compound into lockdown. The threat level for international terrorism in the United Kingdom was already listed at severe. Wednesday was the anniversary of suicide bombings in the Brussels airport and subway that killed 32 people, and the latest events echoed recent vehicle attacks in Berlin and Nice, France. Thank you for tuning in. If you found this to be interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. While at it, post your thoughts on this and whatever else is on your mind below. If you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. Have a great day guys. Stay safe. This concludes this report of the emergency alert system. All normal programming operations may now resume.